Hello guys, welcome back to this channel and thank you for your view in this video. Today we are going to talk about a JET table, how to create a table in Java using Swing components. Okay, so as you know, we create a table by using the Java class called JET table. And okay, so without delay to create a table, we use JET table class. So we say J table and I'm going to call it table equal new J table. So now if we want to determine what are going to be the columns and the rows of our table, we need to use arrays. Okay, so we're going to create or declare some arrays and we will place those arrays in our table. We'll pass the arrays as parameters of this j table instance so let's start here we will say we start with a string array we'll call it column names so this array is going to represent the names of the column or the table header all right so we will say first name last name job we say experience and then we will say intern so these strings are going to be the header of our table. Now we can create another array. So this second array is going to be the content or the data that will populate our table based on the column. And this one is supposed to be a two-dimensional object array. So if you can recall, the first one is a string array. The second parameter of our table must be a two-dimensional object array. And they are going to represent various data that we will populate our table with. So I'll say object, and because it's a two-dimensional array, so we need to have two square brackets here, and I'm going to call it data. So now in here, I will populate, or I will define the data. So I will say first name Paul, that's going to be the last name, a job, project manager. So as for the experience here, I want to pass an integer value. Okay, how do you pass that integer value? You say new integer and you pass in the value. Then after that, I need to add the other data. And this one, I will add a Boolean value. So new boolean and i can say false all right so as you can know here so here we are declaring or instantiating our two-dimensional array with some data so here we have the first string which is paul paul here is going to be placed under the column first name mark mills under the columns last name project manager under the column job integer five under the column experience and then intern uh, and then boolean falls under the column intern if i want to add some more data in my table i will simply copy this and then paste and i will change the data i'll say kyle jones and say it manager and then new boolean false so let me add a third one developer and then boolean i will say true all right so now let's say that we want to add our table to the frame we will say this that add table and then semicolon so the table will still not show because our layout manager is set to null so we will say that we want to set bound and 50 50 and as for the dimension uh, we will say 700 200 so if we run nothing will still show because we have not passed these arrays in our j table constructor okay so we need to pass column names and then the data in our table constructor so what we're going to do here is we will say data and always make sure that the two-dimensional array must be the first one to be added as a parameter so we'll say column names all right when you run we will still have some issues so now you can see i'm having a table uh with three rows but the header or the column is not showing okay so to make sure that the column is showing we need to actually do something about it so we will come here and say table that get column no get table header that set bounds and we say 50, 0, 700, 
50. Now let's run and see, it's still not showing. We need to add the header as well. So we say this that add and table that get table header, then semicolon. All right, so now you can see the header is showing on our table. If I decrease the height, now you can see, say 30 here, save. Now we have our header showing in the table. So that's one way to do that. We have done that because here we set our layout manager to no. That's why we have to set the bounds for the header. We also had to set the bounds for the table content itself. We had to add the table header and then the table itself. Let's say, for example, if we are using default layout manager for our frame, what would happen? So if we are using the default layout manager for the frame, we will comment all of this. And now if we want to add our table to the frame, we will keep these lines of code. We can add some string constants here. I will simply say border layout because you know the frame uses border layout as the default layout manager. And I will say page underscore start like this. And then as for the table, I will say comma, pass another string constants, border layout that center. And when I run, there you can see the first name, last name, job, experience, intern, and all my data. We've been able to do that because we are using the default layout manager. So we didn't need any set bounds here because we are using a border layout by default. But one thing we can also do is that we can actually apply a scroll pane on a particular table. Let's say that we are using a null layout manager on the frame. So we will uncomment these lines of code. We will comment these and then we will simply just these ones here. Remove the swing constants here. As for the table bounds, we are reducing the size of the height of our table content. So now when I run, this is it. Now I have reduced the height of the table here to 10. Now you can see we are not able to actually look at the rest of our table data. So we actually need to be able to scroll down in order to view the remaining data in our table. So one way to do that is to actually use the scroll pane. I'm gonna say J scroll pane. I'm gonna call it SCP new J scroll pane like this. Let me comment these lines of code first import the j scroll pane class and as i said the scroll pane class we we're gonna pass our table instance but if we run nothing will show because we definitely need to set the bounds of our scroll pane because our layout manager is set to null what should i do i'll copy this paste it here i'm gonna say scp Actually, I don't need this. I'll comment it like that. So SCP is standing for scroll pane. Then here, I will say height, let's say 20. I need to add the scroll pane to the frame. So this that add SCP, then you run. So now you can see the header of the table showing. Let's increase the size here to 50. Yeah, so you can see the rest of the table showing and I can even scroll through the table. Let's increase to 70 and I'm going to add some more data in my table, comma, and I will simply put in some name, add another one, integer, let's say four, boolean, false. And now let me run. So I have my table and I'm able to actually see three rows, but if I scroll down, you can see I'm able to actually see the remaining rows in my table. So that's basically how you use the scroll pane and apply it on a table. There's another method that you can use to make sure that the table uses the entire height of a container that's called set fill viewport height so you can write here table that set fills viewport height and then say true so let me comment this also comment that so that we will use the default layout manager so now you can see the table is showing on my frame and normally thanks to the this line of code and this method set fields viewport height that table is going to contain the entire is going to use the entire height of the container 
Uh, one, one other thing I want to show you is how you can actually change the width of a particular column in a table. So how we can do that. So let's come down here. I will say table column, call this column, instantiate that to null. I will import column class. And down here, I will say for int i equal to zero, semicolon i less than five, semicolon i plus plus open and close the curly braces so i'm going to update column so it's a column equal to table that get column model and then that get column i and it, oh, there's a typo here so it's, all right so this is going to get the column at a particular index position and then i'll say if i equal to zero that's going to be the first column then in here we can actually change the width of that particular column so we say column that set preferred width and then let's say 200 here and then else so in the else statement we say column that set preferred size 50. so now when you run so you can see the difference in the size of the first column all right if we say if i is equal to one and then run you will see that the second column is going to increase its width so one other thing i want to show you that we can add actually is the selection we can actually set cell selections in a table so let, let's come here down here we will say table that set cell selection enabled true and then after we have done that we can declare a list selection model instance so that will be list selection model call it select assignment operator and down here we need to get the selection model of our table so we say table that get selection model let me import the list selection so what we are trying to do here is that we want to make sure that when the user select a particular cell in our table we want our program to output the value of that cell in the console we need to set cell selection enabled we need to declare the list selection model and to do that we have to get the selection model of the table and we now have to set the selection mode so we will say select that set selection mode so now here we need to pass in the selection mode so we will simply say list selection model that single selection so this is going to make sure that when you click on a cell only that cell will be selected okay so there are various list selection modes we have the row selection you know the column selection the single interval selection the multiple interval selection and uh, the single selection okay so now we need to add the list selection listener. So we say select that add list selection listener and we pass in new list selection listener. So there's a typo here. Let's import the list selection listener. We need to add an implemented method. So that's it. So now in this particular method, we are going to declare a string variable that we're going to call data and we were going to instantiate it to null for now and now we are going to get selected rows and columns so we say int array row so that will be table that get selected rows and we'll do the same thing for the column so int column table that get selected columns and now we say for int i equal to zero i is less than the length of the row and i plus plus we say data so the data returned we want to convert that into a string but before we we convert the data um we will add another for statement so we will say for int j equals zero because we want to select a cell not a row so let me correct this here. So we will, so the cell is actually a combination of a row and a column, all right? So the first for statement, 
will be to determine the row. And then the second one is going to help us determine the column. And I will say for int j equals zero, j less than column. I'll say column that length semicolon i plus plus. And now I can update the value of the data I want to output. So here I need to convert that data because as you can see the row and the column are arrays. So I need to convert the data returned into a string. So that's why I say between the bracket string and I will say table that get value at row i and then column j. And then down here I can specify a system that out that print line the data you selected is and then I will concatenate with the value returned by the string variable data. So as you can see here, get value at row I and then column J. And I, as I was telling you, we want to select a cell and a cell is actually a combination of row and a column. All right, so now let's run. And if I select this row here, oh, I'm getting an error here. Okay, this is supposed to be J. If I say J here and run, select all right so now you can see my output statement if i select this so now you can see if you click on the cell you know the output statement is showing on the screen so guys i hope this video was informative and uh, please don't forget to like to share and comment on uh, this particular video and i hope to meet you in the next one